everybody. My name is Alejandra Cartagena. This summer I had the pleasure to work with Dr. Tappan and Sir Dr. Planket. Today I'm going to talk to you about the protein expression of the neural stem cell marker nesting in the telencephalon of the adult silverfish brain. As Isaac mentioned to you early, adult stem cells are thought to be undifferentiated cells found among differentiated cells. They can renew themselves or they can differentiate into different types of cells found, among, found in the tissues or the organ. This is the case of the neural stem cells right here, which can differentiate into neurons, astrocytes, and oligodendrocytes. It has been shown in previous studies that the adult stem cells are found in specific areas called stem cell niches. These areas are thought to direct neurogenesis, which is the birth of neurons. In this schematic of a sagittal section of the brain, you can observe the neurogenic areas, right here in black, and some of the adult stem cell niches that are found in the silverfish brain. You can observe those in yellow. In the telencephalon, which is this part right here, the olfactory bulb and the rest of the brain. To detect these stem cells, there are many ways. One is uh, by looking at the expression of a protein called nesting. To remind you, nesting is a type 6 filament, intermediate filament protein that is expressed only in neural stem cells. Preview studies in Germany um, that use in situ probes, in situ probes recognize nesting mRNA have shown and detected nest, that nesting is in the telencephalon of the zebrafish. Here you can observe the area of the section in the telencephalon. In panels A, B, C, and D, you can observe some of the sections of the telencephalon that uh, show expression of the nesting mRNA. Since this uh, research has been published, a new nesting antibody which recognizes zebrafish nesting protein has become commercially available. So we decided to analyze the nesting protein expression in the telencephalon of the zebrafish brain. Since we know that uh, nesting mRNA is expressed in the telencephalon, my hypothesis will be that the nesting antibody will detect the neural stem cells in the telencephalon of the zebrafish as well. To test my hypothesis, I dissected many, 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 many brain <laughs> fish. Uh, then I went and I fixed them in 4% biformaldehyde. I proceeded and embedded them in OCT, and then I sectioned them. Adjacent slides were placed in two separate sets of, adjacent sections, sorry, were placed in two separate sets of slides. One set was used as an experimental group, and the other one was used as a control. In this way, we had anatomically similar sections in both of our sets. Then I proceed to immunostain. I pre-block it, our, our blocking solution was made out of 1.5 NGS, which is normal goat serum, Tridonex, which is a detergent. This was done to permeabilize the membrane so that the antibody could get into the cell easily. My primary antibody which was nesting, which is a rabbit anti-nesting antibody. The second antibody that we used was a goat anti-nesting, and it's GAR594. For my controls, I used no secondary, sorry, no primary, only secondary. What we found? We found that nesting positive cells were detected in the telencephalon of the zebrafish. In panel A, you can observe the nuclei of the cells corresponding to a section 75 right here in the telencephalon, according to the atlas of Bulimus. In panel B, you can observe some of the nesting positive cells along this area. And panel C is just a composite of A and B. It's clearly observed that there is a very small population of nesting positive cells along here. For panel D, it's again 
the nuclei of a different section of the town cephalon. In panel E, you can observe the nesting positive cells. Here you can see that there is a larger population of these cells in this particular section of the brain. If is a F is a composite of D and E. For our controls, we use no, anti no, anti no primary antibody was added. We see in panel B that there is very little background staining. This means that the results that we were getting are not just background staining due to the secondary antibody. In other words, we don't see any signal at all of the nesting positive cells. As a conclusion, we can say that nesting antibody detects immunoreactivity in the telencephalon of adult zebrafish brain. The future directions of this project is to identify the nesting positive immunoreactivity in the brainstem of the zebrafish. I would like to thank Dr. Planket, Dr. Alexis, France, my lab members, the US Department of Defense, and the MSEIP grant. Here are some of my references. Do you have any <coughs> questions? It's a, it's a dual one. At one point, you mentioned you used Triton X100, right, at a 0.3 percent to mm -hmm. make holes in the membrane, right? Yes. Did you try it without? Is one. And the second part of my question: What would happen if you use 15 percent? We did try that. We tried a different detergent, which was, if I'm not wrong, Twin 20. Yes, mm -hmm. we tried Twin 20. We didn't, it didn't work, the procedure didn't work. Uh, we were getting, our slides, were, our sections were falling off the slides. We didn't try without the detergent. I, I think it won't work either because it won't have the, it won't permeabilize the membrane. So the antibody won't be able to get into the cell. And what would happen if you use 15% instead of, let's say, 0.3%? What we did is we use uh, we use a higher percentage. What we what we, what it did was that it it actually didn't work. We had a high background staining when we used that, so we decided just to stay with that with the, our solution. The, the Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Can you explain the need of using two antibodies? Yes. Okay. Um, Can you pull up your... Yeah. Okay. okay, the primary antibody basically binds to the antigen. In this case, will be the protein nesting. The, pr the, it, the primary, primary antibody doesn't have the fluorophore, which is used to see it under the microscope. This, this secondary antibody will bind to many primaries. In this way, it will give uh, a higher, how would you say, uh, signal, yes, a higher signal. That's just why we use a primary and a secondary as well. Any other questions? Can you go back? To your mRNA slides. You mentioned mRNA in here that you can do for zero pros and mRNA, right? But you mentioned that you're uh, looking for nesting protein. Can you explain the difference between mRNA and the protein nesting? Okay. So, uh, I think Isa was the one who no, Josiah explained that. Uh, DNA is transcribed into uh, RNA, and then this is translated into protein. But if the presence of RNA doesn't mean that the protein will be translated, and even the presence of the protein doesn't mean that it will be active. That's the difference. Yeah. Go to the slide with the panels A, B, C, D, E, and F. That one, okay. Uh, we're both sets from the same area of the brain? Both sets were from the same uh, brain, but a different area. Different area. The okay. first one was area 75, according to the atlas. The bottom part is section 85. Mm -hmm. Would that explain the difference in the pattern of the state? Yes. 
Yes, uh, the, stem, the positive cells were found in just the specific areas of the brain. Yeah. Thank you so much.